what he had to say about trade and investment, how to lift people out of poverty. Yeah, the, the president's speech had a lot of uh, positives. Um, um, well, not minding the one he said uh, of the cough, the, 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 the speech had a lot of positives. Um, he uh, seized the opportunity to uh, tell the world what Nigeria was doing in terms of, um, you know, uh, bringing about uh, ease of uh, doing business. Uh, he let the world know about the ranking, latest ranking by the World Bank, uh, ease of doing business, where Nigeria moved up 24 places, where Nigeria was also rated among the, one of the 10 most improved uh, countries in terms of um, uh, ease, of, ease of doing business. Uh, he also told the world about um, improved security, uh, particularly in the northeast and um, uh, in the south south. So, uh, as I said, it had a lot of um, uh, positives. And more importantly, too, he talked about rapid expansion in human capital, in knowledge economy. Uh, he talked about empowerment of um, uh, the need to empower youth uh, and women. And of, and of course, issues around them. Um, you know, providing uh, not only hard infrastructure, but also uh, soft in, in infrastructure, you know, among uh, member, member countries of um, the Commonwealth. And he also uh, emphasized the, the, uh, the need to, to provide safeguards, safeguards against um, injurious um, uh, trade policies. Um, he said labor and industry, you know, we are worried, uh, worried that there are some trade policies that tend to, um, you know, subsidize goods that encourage dumping, uh, dumping in um, particularly de developing um, uh, economies. So he talked about that in addition to also uh, lending his voice to um, uh, free trade, um, Commonwealth countries, you know, leveraging free trade to spur, to spur growth. So as I said earlier on, his uh, speech, you know, touched on a, a, a good number of, um, you know, positives. And then, um, the one that also uh, struck me particularly uh, was when he said that um, uh, Shell, he met with Shell staff uh, who uh, told him about the int their intention to bring in about $20 billion investment, of course, in the Nigerian uh, uh, oil sector. So as I said, that was a, a very good one. Um, but of course, we know that the oil sector is one area where employment elasticity um, is still low. Um, so, in addition to whatever was discussed, in my view, uh, the, the government should go further, you know, to let um, to begin to discuss with Shell on even the possibility of getting um, Shell, uh, Shell, the presence of Shell, you know, felt more, you know, in, in Nigeria than it, you know, than it is currently. I am talking about um, uh, the possibility of Shell being listed on the Nigerian stock exchange. Uh, Shell has been around since 1958. Um, in Nigeria since 1958, and I know that um, Shell has, apart from the primary listing on the London Stock Exchange, Shell has secondary listing on the New York Stock, Stock Exchange, on Euronext, um, Amsterdam, and um, even on the New York, um, uh, uh, yes, I've mentioned the New York Stock Exchange. So nothing says that Shell cannot also be listed you know, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, uh, given the fact that we are the biggest economy in Africa. The second thing, too, is that Shell has been only involved in upstream activities in Nigeria. Uh, but I know in some other African countries, Shell is also involved in downstream activities. W one example is uh, South Africa. So the arrangement should be such that uh, even if it means uh, setting up a, a special purpose company for that purpose, a special purpose vehicle, transferring just some, sh some shares of, of uh, Shell to that company for the purpose of listing on Nigerian Stock Exchange so that a great number of uh, some Nigerians too can participate, uh, no matter how little, in the fortunes of Shell. Okay, that's the that's kind of investment I want to see, you know, coming to um, Nigeria. Well, MTN is um, about being ex expected. If Shell gets listed, uh, no matter how little, this is one company that has the highest capital, one of the highest capitalization, you know, in, in the world. If it gets listed, of course, you can be sure that it will uh, impact very positively on the uh, Nigerian capital market. We understand. Uh, we we'll, we'll understand that promoting investment. So you, you speaking as a, a chartered stockbroker and a professor of finance and banking. So that's well understood. But uh, do you think uh, this was the way that the Nigerian team?
spoke in London last week. Did you uh, see any news that were really open for business? And, and that's the, uh, that's the uh, head of the, the uh, TV screen. Is Nigeria really open for business? Uh, beyond the rhetoric of uh, whether we are good, we are ready, we are doing X, Y, Z, did you see us touch on specifics as you were touching on now that you think, yes, we've delivered something or we've gotten something as a takeaway from the Commonwealth business meetings? We need to wrap up on that. Yes, that's why that's why that's why I'm making this um, uh, suggestion, uh, so that we begin to th you know th think about them. You, you, um, you are not a cabinet. The, you are not a cabinet uh, minister, Professor Owaleke. Respectively, uh, respectfully, you are not a minister, uh, and you were not in London. Yeah, we, we were both in Nigeria. I, I'm yes. sure of that. So, so yes. the the ministers, the, for example, the minister of industry, trade, and investment, and his team are the ones who are expected to be making uh, such statements as you are making to uh, the folks in London. So, do you think we are selling Nigeria well enough? Yes, I, 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 I think um, uh, something has been done uh, about it, even though uh, more is still required. Uh, the fact that the president was uh, physically present at, at Chogom and participated in the Commonwealth Forum, uh, you know, speaks um, uh, the volumes. Um, he didn't send a um, representative. Of, co of course, we need to be showing this presence, and that was also why I wasn't happy that um, you know he wasn't in uh, in Kigali for the African um, um, you know continental trade free uh, uh, area agreement. Even though um, um, it, you know it was also good that Nigeria didn't sign at that time, you know, to allow for wide consultations. But South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa was there. And um, there was no, Nigeria too, you know, would have been there. It's important we don't give up our, you know, influence um, in, in Africa. It's important we don't give up our influence in all these uh, regional uh, uh, blocks, organizations that we belong, belong in, including uh, uh, the Commonwealth. Uh, that's why, as I, as I said, I'm particularly happy that the president was there and uh, took part in um, in the deliberation. So, okay. for me, the uh, things he said at that place, particularly... Professor Waleke, you know, let's, 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 gave, let's take a break. You know, you know, a lot of positives. Professor Waleke, let's go to Washington when we come back after the break. We thank you very much. Stick around. We'll be right back into everyone.